Rick and Morty is almost over, and as we head into the finale of season three, we have a very interesting episode that seems to make some very specific messages from Dan Harmon. In this episode, we talk about, uh, well, we touch finally on Beth. I don't yes. think we've ever really had a Beth-centric episode before. Not really. I mean, she's been playing a larger part in the season as a whole because of the divorce from Jerry, but this mm -hmm. was really a chance for for us to get to know Beth and her, and really explore her relationship with 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 Rick, which because it was always just from the very beginning, just accepted. She's like, "Oh, I love Rick. Of He's course, the Rick best. I'll leave you for him, Jerry." E exactly. Yeah. And so, and now we kind of find out that there's a lot more beneath the surface. And so, this mm -hmm. was a really interesting episode that had, a, a, and also a really interesting B plot too, with uh, when the kids kind of get separated and go off, and, and Jerry has his own side adventure. Mm -hmm. But definitely the Beth advent, the Beth storyline with her imaginary fruity land <laughs> imaginary uh fruity land uh adventure what i loved was that they all got the message right away like oh yeah. what is tommy doing is he leading up this hedonistic cabal of cannibalistic <laughs> and hedonism he's yeah. what he's doing is he's having sex with the imaginary creatures mixing their dna together creating a new creature with half human dna and he eats it he eats his his incestual children yes it's horrible <laughs> it's cannibalistic incest but they all got it right away yeah and they're like oh yeah yeah, yeah. take us to king, king tommy we get it that's that's a big reveal <laughs> and then rick seems to also get like oh you realized i'm an asshole and you're just like me yes Which, well and i think that's what this series this season has really been building up to is is that Beth, for the first couple of seasons, was your typical kind of like sitcom housewife kind of thing. But you really see how smart Beth is more and more as the season has gone on. They've really played it down, though, in the yeah. past. Because, I mean, I think the story is she got pregnant with Summer at 17. Right. Um, and then she never really got to live up to her f potential because she was such a young mother and she right. became a horse surgeon instead of a regular human surgeon. And she's dissat she's clearly dissatisfied with yeah. that. Well, th yeah, that, that, that tension was built under the, from the very beginning with her and Jerry. And you kind of knew the divorce was going to come at some point. Well, Jerry's a leech and it, his yes. other relationship with Kiara, the warrior, yeah. proved that as well. <laughs> yeah. He only absorbs and take from the women around him right. and, and people around him. And can never take responsibility for anything, even putting the bra blame <laughs> the breakup on the children so that then she comes to try to kill uh, uh, Summer right, and Morty. I get it. My problems are I'm a racist yes. and a sexist <laughs> and I'm stupid and my racist, sexist, stupid adventure has gotten us in trouble. <laughs> Can you help me now? I did. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it just so brilliantly written, just absolutely. I mean, they, they they don't pull any punches with any of their characters with Rick and Morty. They go mm. immediately right to the core of what everything is and, and play off every trope. And I mean, they did this too this episode with Beth, where they kind of tear her apart and basically you realize that she, like he's you know, saying early, she's exactly like Rick. Mm -hmm. She is Rick's daughter. But she's been pushing it away for so long. Of exactly. The truth of both of those things. It also got, uh, played with the idea, or the trope rather, that's in a lot of television, which is the perceived asshole or the genius who's also an asshole. We have mm -hmm. that in House. We have that in the source material for House. Sherlock. We have that in The Big Bang Theory, The Mentalist. It's it's kind of a trope that if someone is so brilliant, they can do anything. Basically, they can be a huge asshole, but because of their value as in their brilliance, it's okay. And then it's yeah. also toyed with the idea of, well, if nothing matters, why not have fun with the limited time we have? Right. It doesn't matter, sure. And I think that's an interesting idea to mm -hmm. talk about and, and explore, for sure. I think Dan Harmon has touched it before in his, some of his other works. Yes. Uh, it's very which, meaning of life-ish. You know, what is the what meaning? Is the why, why are we here? Yeah, exactly. Very meta, very existential and whatnot in this in this show, which especially, I mean, with Rick, it's so interesting because we have this trope, but that it's a trope in TV, but for Rick, it is his, it is, it is him, it is his personality, it is his driving force mm -hmm. from the very beginning. It's not just a, a character trait, it is the character. Well, here's where I think Dan Harmon is sort of starting to address the problems in the Rick and Morty audience, mm -hmm. right? So this is a brilliant show. It's one of my favorite shows. However, it's gotten a very bad reputation thanks to some of its fans being terrible, awful people. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of the time, and ironically, I think these people have missed the point. Yeah. Because while Rick is so smart, he always, you know, he he's like, he throws chaos into situations because, yeah. you know, again, he doesn't care, what's the point, nothing matters. Uh, he always has a funny quip. 
He's an alcoholic. Yeah. He has sex with almost anything. Um, and then unity. <laughs> I well, yeah, unity. But I, I, yeah. Uh, Rick, Jerry's girlfriend on the answering machine. Yep. This episode. <laughs> but I think it's. I think people are praising the wrong parts of this because I think the show also makes mention of how these are problems for Rick. He's not yeah. a perfect person. He also has moments of vulnerability that don't seem to be glorified as much where he is lonely. He wants to be around people. He yeah. he seeks love. He seeks these things that he it, he's too hurt and damaged to admit. It, it goes back to the meaning of wubble wubble dub dub, right? Yeah. In, in the, when you talk to Birdman at the end of season one, he's like, this is, in the, in the language of my people, this means that he is crying out in pain. Help me, please. Exactly, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it, it kind of goes back to the fact that, yeah, like, people are latching on to, oh yeah, you know, Rick's a jerk, so we can be jerks too, and that's not it. He's well, a, There's a reason that he's a jerk. There's a reason why he is the way he is. I think you can be a jerk if you're the smartest man in the world. Which, to be fair, none of us are. None of exactly. Well, that's are. that's the we thing. We haven't earned it. He's also not a perfect character. Right. So I think if you are feeling like this, he's this valorized uber nerd. He's just like us. We're just like him. You're getting the wrong message from this. Yeah. You ultimately don't get the show. Yeah. And that kind of sucks. Dan has also spoken outside the show, uh, saying his thoughts on people who are particularly combative to uh, women who write yeah, for the, the show, writers, who yeah. create the show you love in this very particular season especially who um and also i think you know just fans in general who don't fit whatever role that is because that is what smart people do it's not dan has said these knobs they want to protect the content they think they own and somehow combine that with their need to be proud of something they have which is often only their race or gender it's offensive to me as someone who was born both male and white and still works way harder than them that there's some white male fan out there trying to further some creepy agenda by quote protecting my work <laughs> i've made no bones about the fact that i loathe these people in conclusion don't be an asshole yeah <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's it, basically. Yeah, like you know, we've done. Or if you are an asshole, you better earn it. You and better be the you. Yeah, that. you better be the smartest person in the world, richest person in the world, something like that. Not and, the richest person in the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the smartest person in the world, because I feel there is value in intelligence, but yeah. there is also value in understanding your own intelligence in context of something greater, and to stop self congratulating because that's not what actual smart people do. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> Yeah, but I think it is a shame that that has kind of become the idea that people have of Rick and Morty fans because yeah. I don't think it should be. I think this is a dark show. It's a smart show. It shines light on things that most TV shows would never even touch. Yeah. Or well, on. well, and I think to be to be fair, I think that like with a lot of shows and a lot of fan bases, typically the it's only the the worst of the worst who are the most vocal and the most out there. Not not always. There's there's Typically, it's only a small section of the audience that are the mm -hmm. ones who take the time to comment on YouTube, to send in letters, to, to complain, to write, to get on the internet. <laughs> to I, misread the intent, to, to yeah, follow well, their own agenda for whatever reason. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, I, th I think to a degree that, that is true. I mean, I think that most people who are fans of the show either understand it or at least understand they should not emulate Rick to just to be a jerk just to be a jerk. Mm -hmm. I think that most people are mature enough to understand that... Uh, and people who enjoy this show, that that's not the point. But you're going to have this, ten, we'll say 10% of the audience that is a toxic little nugget that is basically just, you know, <laughs> also happens to find some, you know, use the internet as a soapbox and making sure that the creators and other people are are listening to their to their you know their, to their to their rhetoric, which is I basically. I promise you, Dan and Justin don't give a shit. Uh, they're going to do their own thing, which made yeah. this good in the first place. Audience, have you had a bite of that toxic little nugget? Please <laughs> let us know below, and please like and subscribe for more. Mention Szechuan sauce for a bonus. No.